This video is going to take you through the collision theory and uh, the way in which it's applied to explain how factors affect the rate of the reaction. So, let's get going. Um, the collision theory states that uh, for a reaction to take place, particles must, and there are three things. Firstly, they must collide. Secondly, they must collide with the correct orientation. And then thirdly, they must collide with sufficient energy. So that's the collision theory. For a reaction to take place, particles must collide with correct orientation and with sufficient energy. And let's look at each of those in turn. Firstly, the particles must collide. I think that's relatively straightforward. For a reaction to take place, the particles must collide. I think you'd be happy to appreciate that uh, unless the particles actually bump into each other, um, we can't have breaking of bonds and forming of new bonds, and thus a reaction can't take place. So I think that's relatively easy. First premise of the collision theory is that particles must collide. Secondly, they must collide with the correct orientation. Um, a successful collision can only take place if the particles collide uh, with the correct orientation. So let's uh, consider a molecule of ethene, two carbon atoms with a double bond. And uh, I'm sure you know that ethene undergoes addition reactions and uh, hydrogen halides, such as uh, HCl, uh, will react with uh, ethene to form chloroethane. And let's imagine that an HCl molecule uh, approaches the ethene molecule in this orientation. Um, I think you know, hopefully, that uh, HCl is a, um, a polar molecule because of the difference in electronegativities between the chlorine and the hydrogen atom. So the chlorine end is slightly negative, the hydrogen end is slightly positive. Now, of course, on the ethene molecule, we have a double bond between the carbon atoms, which means that we've got uh, two shared pairs of electrons. So we have a region of high electron density, which is obviously negative. And I think you can then see that there's going to be repulsion between the negative uh, double bond center and the slightly negative uh, chlorine atom on the HCl. And because of that, we're not going to have a successful collision. So that would be an example of an incorrect orientation. If we consider the exact opposite, the HCl molecule orientated so that the slightly positive hydrogen end uh, approaches the negative center of the double bond, um, I think you can appreciate then that there will be attraction between the slightly positive hydrogen and the negative electron density, and that will result in a successful collision as long as it has sufficient uh, energy for that reaction to take place. So that's the issue of correct orientation as uh, shown in that particular example. The third aspect of the uh, collision theory states that particles must collide with sufficient energy. And so a successful collision requires that the particles uh, bump into each other, collide with each other uh, with sufficient energy. Let's have a look at an example where we have two hydrogen molecules uh, reacting with an oxygen molecule. That's a classic example of hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. Now, for this reaction to take place, as they collide, we need a breaking of bonds. And so the bonds between the hydrogen atoms must break and that double bond over there must break. And that requires energy. Once those uh, bonds are broken, then the reaction can uh, proceed and we can form two water molecules. And so it's that breaking of those bonds that uh, is important. And that sufficient energy that we talk about is uh, what we also know as activation energy, the energy to get the reaction going. If we consider a uh, potential energy graph uh, plotting the course of that particular reaction, um, we start off with the hydrogen and oxygen molecules at particular energy. Then we have to put energy in to break the bonds, and so the, bond, the graph goes up. And then new bonds are formed and energy is released, and we get our product out, which is the two water molecules. Now the difference be uh, between where we start and where we finish in terms of energy, now that's called the enthalpy change, or delta H. But what we're interested in now is the energy hill that we have to get over. The difference between where we start and the top of the graph, the area uh, where the activated complex would be formed, that refers to the 
activation energy, and that's the energy that we have to put in to break those bonds. So when you're talking about sufficient energy uh, for a reaction to take place, that's the energy we're talking about. All right, so those are the three aspects of the collision theory, um, that particles must collide, they must collide with the correct orientation, and they must collide with sufficient energy. Let's just talk very quickly about uh, how one goes about answering these kind of questions. Uh, a typical question would be t uh, where you're asked to explain why an increase in temperature uh, increases the rate of reaction, or why a higher concentration of acid increases the rate of reaction of an acid with a metal, or something like that. So let's have a look at uh, uh, each one in turn. If you're asked uh, a question about the increase in concentration or pressure, well, that results in more particles per unit volume. That's what an increase in concentration or pressure means. And if you've got more particles per unit volume, then you've got a greater collision frequency. And that phrase is important. Uh, collision talks to the first aspect of the uh, uh, collision theory, which says particles must collide. And frequency speaks to the rate at which they collide. So an increase in concentration or pressure uh, increases the collision frequency. If we increase the uh, temperature, then that results in, uh, in the particles having uh, greater average kinetic energy. And if there's an increase in kinetic energy, then there would be an increase in the frequency of collisions where the energy is greater than, equal to, greater than or equal to activation energy. So more particles will have sufficient energy for the collision to be successful. If we then uh, consider a change to the uh, surface area, if we increase the surface area, if we use a powder for instance, um, that means then that there are more particles exposed to collide, uh, and hence the coll collision frequency once again increases. So an increase in surface area results in uh, a, a greater collision frequency. Now no matter which uh, um, factor you are arguing, uh, once you've finished explaining the link between the collision theory um, and, uh, and how that factor then uh, impacts the uh, rate of successful collisions, you need to conclude with a statement that says, therefore, the rate of successful collisions and then either increases or decreases with, depending on whether you're trying to uh, explain an increase or decrease in rates. And that phrase, rate of successful collisions, then directly links your argument back to an increase or decrease in rates.